So let's go ahead and um, start with the first exercise, and this should be really a syntax refresher. We're going to, um, this is exercise one called moving circle, and this should be a, a way to get the juices flowing today um, for those of you that uh, did the introduction to processing uh, course. This is going to be uh, developing from that content. All right, so syntax refresher, what are some key things that we want to note uh, when we're developing a simple program that makes a, a circle move in the Y direction? Um, we need to uh, re revisit the idea that processing has two programming modes, right? Um, actually, there are more, but we'll focus on the two primary ones, which are basic and continuous, right? Um, basic mode executes once. Continuous mode is uh, refreshing and um, rerunning the code every frame, by default, 30 frames per second. So in continuous mode, right, we can see things move. We can have interaction with them over time. And this is where the kind of interesting graphical and time-based graphical representation um, can get really fun and interesting with processing. Right? Basic mode uh, you know, doesn't make processing very unique, whereas this uh, very much does so. Okay, if we're going to use the continuous mode within processing, we need to uh, uh, remember that there are two basic sections that we're going to be using whenever we um, are using the continuous mode, right? And those two sections are setup and draw. Setup runs once uh, when the application starts and initializes all of the things to get the program running. Draw, on the other hand, is called the application event loop. It runs every frame. So it repeats every frame that we have within one second it's going to execute whatever is inside of the draw function. Okay, so here's a graphical uh, representation of the anatomy of a processing sketch, right? Uh, at the beginning of our sketch, we're going to write uh, or declare some variables. We may also define them at the same time. Later on in our sketch, we're going to encapsulate or um, put within the global setup structure a set of actions, right? Subsequently to that, we'll have our draw section, and that's where our actions will be repeating every frame. So this is the extents of the entire processing sketch. Um, at the very top level, we have our variables, or sometimes called global variables. And then we have our two sections here related to setup and draw. So really what we're talking about is how we organize our code. So that's the structure of our sketch, of the code that develops our sketch. And also we need to note scope. Right, which is any, which means that anything that is declared, a, let's say a variable being declared inside of global setup, cannot be used by global draw because it is outside that section of the, the code. Whereas if we're declaring and defining something up here, it can be used anywhere within that extent of the code. Okay, so a couple of reminders on syntax and processing. It is case sensitive, right? Every line must end in a semicolon. That's the, a way to tell the computer that the line is terminated and we're going to go on to the next action. And whenever we make a variable, the type must be defined whenever we're declaring that variable. So if I want to have an integer, I have to make sure that processing knows that my integer, being my variable name, is in integer type. Okay, and one last thing that we're going to talk about before we get into actually um, developing our sketch is let's talk a little bit more about how we control the flow of our sketch, right? If we have a ball that's going to be falling in the y direction, such as this, right, what happens when it reaches the lower end of our sketch window? Well, we want to probably have it do something. So the way we're going to control what it does is a conditional statement that says, if we reach the end, go in the other direction. Right? We can think of our conditional statements as ways to um, trigger a specific action um, when the condition is met, or false, allow something else to happen. So the basic comparisons are going to be uh, testing equality, or if we want to see if something is larger than or less than, etc. So these are the this is the table of possible comparisons we can um, use within our control uh, within our conditional statements. 
And then um, in order to, or as another way to think about it is that we're actually making a decision, right? If a particular condition has been met, let's do something. But if not, let's do a different action. All right, so here's a more um, specific instance of what that might look like in processing. Okay, and we can also um, build up a kind of collection of um, trues and falses, our conditional statements, into an aggregate by testing and or or not, which are logic operators to be able to combine conditional statements. All right, so let's make our circle move in the y direction and get it to um, reverse its direction whenever it reaches the bottom of the screen. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and launch processing. We're using processing 2 beta. Um, I'm using 2 beta 7, which should have been downloaded just recently, so there shouldn't be too many uh, additional developments since then. Okay, I'm going to put this over on the side of my screen, and for your sake, I'm going to make sure that my uh, text size is a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm typing. Great. That looks good. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to include our pseudocode, right? Again, this is going to be, um, we're going to be looking at how we can make something move. So to start our pseudocode, we're going to do our two backslashes. And let's just remind ourselves what the topic is going to be for this uh, particular sketch. This is going to be linear movement. And what we need to do, um, based on our um, uh, st structural anatomy of our um, processing sketch, is that we need to uh, section off the different parts of our, um, our window here. So let's go ahead and start by saying that this is where our global variables are going to be. Down below, this is going to be our global setup. And below that, this is going to be our global draw. Great. Now we want to have our um, our circle move in the y direction. So what are some of the things that we need to define? Well, at first we need to have uh, some variables that will hold and store our values for, let's say, position and speed. So let's go ahead and start in our global variables by defining or, yeah, let's define their values for position and speed, All right? Next, relative to the circle itself, let's also declare and define how big it's going to be. So let's define a value for circle radius. Great. And then inside the setup, uh, we need to do a few uh, kind of um, things that we're going to be using over and over again, right? These are keywords related to um, how the sketch window is going to look, the display window um, for our output. So the first thing we're going to do is define the size of the window, right? And we're also going to need to define the starting location for x and y relative to our position, our circle's position. That's going to be within the global setup. And then down below in global draw, we want to, because we're going to be using continuous mode, we need to first refresh the uh, background, right, so that we define the background color. Okay. Uh, the next step is going to be that we need to um, set up the conditional action um, for, the, for the situation where the ball has reached the maximum um, y value in terms of our display window. All right, so we'll just call this for bouncing. All right, so we're going to set up the conditional action for bouncing. The next step is that we need to update the um, 
position of the circle and then draw the circle. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to save this um, as our working file. Again, this is the folder uh, list of files you should have received in the uh, download that we sent you. So this is going to be our working version of the moving circle file. Okay.